Welcome back to another PCBH Corner. We were just talking, I don't know if we need to introduce ourselves anymore, but just as a reminder, I'm David, uh, this is Bridget. Something that we talked about in 2021 was time within the PCBH model, like how to use time, how to uh, go about just approaching these aspects that PCBH causes regularly that really time becomes a really difficult thing right. in, in impediment at times. The one thing I really loved over this past year is the little tip that you come have come up with and use a, utilizing one of our favorite shows, uh, which is Seinfeld. Do you want to you want to talk about that at all? About as far as efficiency, how that relates to time, and what the tidbit is? Yeah. So when it comes to time and PCBH, as we've gone over, we're really throwing out the entire old playbook, mm. and, and and that's a uh, and so go back and watch our PCBH corner on time from 2021. But we're, we're throwing out the playbook. And so we have to have a new playbook. And, and, and the playbook being the playbook of traditional mental health. Yeah, that, that uh, the visit length is going to be predetermined be anywhere between, like say you're doing a 50 minute session. You're gonna do anywhere from like 48 minutes to 52 minutes. And if you go beyond 52 minutes, then uh, you basically did not keep good boundaries. If you stop it before 48 minutes, then essentially you didn't give the you cheated the, the patient yeah, out, of the, yeah, yeah. out of the full amount of time. Whereas in primary care, if you look at the way the physicians mm. operate, um, PAs, nurses, nurses, everybody in primary care operates from the perspective of we have a job to do. And as soon as that job is done, you move on. And can I pause yeah, real quick? And, you know, I, I think it, where my mind goes, it's one of my favorite parts of primary care. And I think we did talk about this in the efficiency video, but or the time video. And I just want to reemphasize it is that when you actually take a step back, and look at it, it's like, why did we ever do it that way? Or why do we continue to do that way? When you see it happen in a primary care visit, that maybe the patient comes in, primary care provider's working with the patient, I don't know, maybe nine minutes into the visit, right. everything is accomplished. You could tell from the patient, they're like, I'm good to go, yeah. I'm ready to go. And it's not like... Yeah, the PCP doesn't say this was scheduled for 20 <laughs> minutes, the MA took four minutes, this, they're not over there calculating and be like, okay, so, and we took nine minutes, so that leaves us seven minutes. And if that other seven minutes isn't done, the patient isn't like, oh, oh, oh and I'm going to get a bill for that. They're like, oh, sweet. I came in, we addressed what needed to happen, and now I get to move on with the rest of my and day. And it's more reflective of the moment that happened. And we always talk about right. these moments, right? It's not reflective of time being the indicator of what it should be. It's the, was the moment an indicator of what it should be. Exactly. And this goes to the beautiful example, the beautiful tidbit that you have from Seinfeld. Yeah, so uh, we've been binge watching over the break, uh, Seinfeld. Such an amazing show. And I, I really do like Seinfeld. I love <laughs> everything about Seinfeld. <laughs> and I actually had thought of this before because we will intermittently binge watch uh, Seinfeld. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there's an episode where George talks about figuring out how to go out on a high note and then just leaving. Right. And Jerry, as you guys know, he's a comedian and uh, he brings up and says, yeah, you know, in, 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 in show business, when you hit that high note, you say goodnight, thank the audience and walk off stage. <laughs> And so then George starts adopting this very thing. So if he's in the friend group and he tells a good joke, he straight up leaves or he's in a business meeting, he straight up leaves. And so if you uh, go to YouTube and you put in George goes out on a high note, it will bring up a three minute clip uh, that's super funny that kind of goes through this. But this is how I teach our BHCs to think of their visit. And what's interesting, we see this. I mean, I, I can one say that this happens to me in visits sometimes. Then uh, definitely when I'm observing trainees or other BHCs oh my gosh, yes. with this is that in the first segment of that YouTube clip, George gives a good suggestion in a business meeting. Right. And everybody's like, we love it. It's great. You know, you could tell there's a sense of, yes. George is feeling, okay, I feel pretty good. He gives another suggestion. And he goes, and or, 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 whenever I'm uh, shadowing a BHC and they're like, and the patient's completely down with the first intervention. Absolutely. And then the BHC is like, or, and I'm like, no. Because what happens in that video, right, is that they're everybody's like, like, what are you yeah, talking about, George? Like, okay. And he's like, I had him. I had him. So my mind just went to another point that hopefully we could talk about very, very quickly with that. Part of what allows people or BHCs to do that is to be aware that what they gave in that intervention, that the moment has happened. Okay. The moment has happened. And I think that's a tough thing, especially one when we're yeah. based a lot on, hey, time, you have to give so much time to patients. That's a tough thing to a relational frame to get away from. 
any suggestions that you would have for BHCs that would help them be aware that the moment has occurred. And so they can be like George could say, it's like, I'm out. Yeah. I do think it's easier on first time visits and warm handoffs, which is another plug for the importance of warm handoffs. Nice. Oh, it's nice. a lot more normal in the fl normal in the flow than if you have a scheduled visit, like, oh, I have an appointment hmm. scheduled at this time. Yeah. That's really hard to just, you know, be like, okay, I'm out. Right, right. Whereas right. when you're doing a warm handoff, you you set the tone because again, they're already in the flow of regular primary care. Hmm. Come in on a warm handoff, you do a nice contextual interview where you're assessing the person's context. Your brain is already putting pieces together. Uh, this is why it's easier if you're a veteran BHC in some in some cases. Some cases. Uh, because you've had a lot of reps. Hmm. So because of these reps, you can identify moments. Uh, better and so then when you're get, gathering their context and then you kind of are able to picture a day in their life and then you throw something out based upon what they've said and you could see it in their eyes and they're just like yeah 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 I, I I'm really aware, aware, well aware of that moment now when they're like yeah and I'm like okay so let's write that down and then I pivot right into my regular structure where I say okay I, you like this plan, and then I flesh it out to make it smarter, more specific and measurable and, um, and uh, relevant mm -hmm. uh, and time-oriented. Write that out and then print it. And then bring it back and say, we have an awesome plan, and hand it to them. And so that's their cue. And so the ones, one of mm -hmm. sometimes when those folks, well, sometimes that's all you need. Correct. What's done is done. The moment's done. What's done is done. But if you're able to, to, to do that, when people come back for follow-up visits, they kind of expect a similar... They already know that cadence that's coming. Exactly. Yeah. So that's another really big perk of catching patients on warm handoffs. That's an interesting way of going about it, that this like uh, Seinfeld moment can really almost be a way not only of doing good clinical work, but also set the cadence, set the structure, set the relational frame about future visits, what it's going to be like. And I think where my mind also goes with is this idea that what we always talk about, there has to be belief and also understanding of just how human behavior right. works. Oftentimes, more is not better. You know, oftentimes, just bombarding, and we know this happens a lot yep. of times in healthcare. We bombard people with information. We bombard people with these unbelievable treatment plans that are great. They sound great, they sound in, great. Re in reality, in, in theory. But in reality, really what we know leads to change are these, I don't even want to call them small, Intentional, intentional, incremental, incremental um, behaviors that ripple out. That is a fantastic point. Is mm. the patient is only going to be able to respond to so much. So if you guys have this moment where, again, based upon what they've told you, and you're like, you say something, and you could see it like almost in their eyes light up. Mm. That's your that that's your moment. Write it down. Go print it out. <laughs> Bring it back and say, let's try this plan and uh, you know, come back in a few weeks. Or if you see that they're seeing the PCP in a month. Let's do an appointment the same time. I'll see. Hey, do you want me just to, uh, do you want us to meet up when you come back to see Dr. Smith in a month? Hmm. And we can see how this plan worked and then, or how it went. Uh, not how it worked. I don't you actually phrase that. Um, just see how the plan went. Like that. And then when you come back, we just check in on it. And so, uh, yeah. And so. Should we end on a high note? Like, I feel well, like we've said what we need to say. And the only thing that I was going to add to it, and maybe oh, no. I know I, I, I'm not doing the thing that was about to go. I know. Um, you might be thing, violating the principle. The one thing right I now. wanted to add to it is that the reason why I love this okay. is that it's a metaphor, like we always talk with patients, that a lot of people are aware of. When we talk about these things, uh, making something like using a Seinfeld episode uh, to really drive home a point can be a really beautiful way. And the thing that I was going to just ask people is that if you have other pop, uh, pop culture uh, references or other metaphors that you use to describe some of these nuances of behavioral health work and BHC work that are difficult to describe, put them into the comment box, email us, because I think it's a good thing to try to get these out more. Because when you talked about that for the first time, I was like, oh my gosh. That makes sense. Very poignant. Absolutely. So let's go out on that high note. We're out.